Blended Podcasts. Brought to you by Blended Audio. What does a healthy, balanced lifestyle consist of? How should you eat? What exercise should you be doing? How many hours of sleep do we really need? Does too much water flush away all your vitamins? Should it be high carb, low fat, or high fat, low carb? The more research you do, the more confusing it gets because there is so much information out there and there are so many conflicting opinions. So how are we supposed to know? Stick around to explore the different approaches to health with us, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And let's try to figure out together what the heck being healthy really means. I am your host, Hazel Priscilla, and this is your weekly dose of Feed Me Honesty. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Feed Me Honesty. I am personally very interested in today's topic and very excited about the guests that we have in studio with us. I met Dr. Wood back in 2017 when I suffered from severe neck and back pain and was looking for a more natural and lasting remedy than having to take pain medication on the daily. A friend of mine who had similar issues recommended that I go for acupuncture and gave me Dr. Rawood's number. At this point, I had tried everything, you guys, from adjusting my posture when I'm sitting behind the computer, adjusting my pillows and my sleeping posture, doing yoga, Epsom salt baths, Thai massages, oils and gels, physiotherapy, but these all seemed to be temporary solutions. I particularly remember one morning waking up and not physically being able to get out of bed. At this point, I picked up the phone and said, Dr. Root, when can you see me? Flash forward a cupping session or two and an acupuncture or three later, I can honestly say that I have never experienced that degree of neck or back pain ever since. Dr. Janaid Rahut studied traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture through UWC's School of Natural Medicine. And this consists of two degrees, a BSc complementary medicine degree and a BCM Chinese medicine acupuncture um, degree. Quite a mouthful. He is also a master coach and NLP practitioner, which is basically life coaching, if I'm right. Dr. Root, welcome to Feed Me Honesty, and thank you so much for being here and for agreeing to share your knowledge with us today. We know that you are a very busy man. Okay, first things first. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do and what kind of problems people come to you with? Okay. How much time do you have? How many hours do we have to discuss this? You have two minutes. (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay. Um... It's really hard to describe what it is that I do. You'll, you'll find your experience versus your friend's experience completely okay. different. Um, the general procession would be kind of like you'll come in, we'll do a little consultation and then we'll do the treatment. But the consultation can vary completely. I feel um, like that also takes like 20 minutes or like, I think when I came to you the first time it was like 30 minutes into the session, it was just consultation. Just consultation, yeah. The consultation sometimes can go up to an hour. Like, is that the most important part? Yes, it is. Um, you can't treat your patient effectively yeah. until you know what is actually wrong with them. You need to spend time to find out where the imbalances are. You need to be able to ask the right questions. Someone might come in and be like, you know what, um, my my shoulder is sore. And for them, that's all that it is. But upon inquiring, you'll find out different pathologies. Maybe there's an emotional component to it. Maybe there was trauma there. Maybe there was something that they've forgotten about. And as they're speaking about it, Sometimes they'll come in for treatment and just in the consultation speaking about it, the pain is relieved. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, wow. There's... That is so interesting. The consultation is therapy itself. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so basically you're, you're a psychologist as well. <laughs> to the list. <laughs> pseudo. We'll go with pseudo psychology. Okay, what would you say is the most common cause of the symptoms that you treat on a daily basis? Is it mostly diet-related, bad posture, stress, or simply genes? Or now you said like sometimes it's some, just emotionally. Um, I'm going to go with lifestyle. And under lifestyle, I'll put the banner of diet. Okay. Um, lack of movement or exercise and a huge emotional component. Um, Often we don't really know what it is that we're feeling and I think oftentimes when we should be feeling, we're thinking and oftentimes we should be thinking, we're using our feelings. So a lot of things get muddled up and there's generally you'll find or I'll find with a lot of my patients, there's always trauma. Um, There's some kind of mitigating factor around um, the presentation of pain or certain kinds of disease like um, 
You might have someone that will come in that's maybe got a cough, for example. They developed a cough eight months ago, nine months ago, been for X days, have taken meds, have done everything, can't get rid of the cough. But in the consultation, which is so long, upon investigation, you might find out close to that time period, they might have lost a family member, they might have gone through a period of grief. And for us in Chinese medicine, um, grief is associated with the lungs, the metal element, so the lungs and the large intestine. And it, it's almost like reverse engineering, kind of like going back to that point. And often when they identify for themselves, oh my God, okay, that's actually when it started, that's when it happened, that's yeah. where it originated from. The cough almost seems to dissipate by itself. Because you acknowledge You're the acknowledging the what it is and, and you can now digest it. You can solve it, you can sort it so out, you can, yeah. Um, what inspired you to study this? Um, you, I know you studied something else before you studied Chinese medicine and acupuncture and all those things. What did you study first? Tell us and then tell us what made you change your mind. Um, ironically, I was in marketing and sales, <laughs> the commerce side of things. Um, I like that. I just don't find it rewarding and enough. And you still use that because I think you run your own practice. You do your own marketing and stuff or not really? Um, yes. You still yes, use I do. I'm actually surprised at how much I use it in consultation for my <laughs> patients. Like, I've, I've come to discover that most of my patients are also entrepreneurial. So they have their own little side businesses or they have just maybe their own mainstream business. And a lot of the time, finance and business is a big cause of problems. And one, we can help them medically. Two, Nothing stops me from helping them by giving them advice on, yeah. you know, You've like little business things or whatever else. Yeah, to help alleviate the medical problems. <laughs> so it's kind of full service. That is awesome. Mm. Okay, so let's get into the whole Eastern versus Western med- medicine debate. For the listeners who don't know what the difference is, I think the website Healthcare in America explains it best when they say traditional Chinese medicine looks at the body's software. It's concerned with energy flow um, through mind and body for better overall well-being, while Western medicine looks at the body's hardware. It analyzes ailments at physical level and with scientific method and modern technology. Okay. So here's where I'm at. I believe that there's a time and a place for Western medicine. And don't get me wrong, I do have a lot of gratitude for what Western practitioners do. But I am the type of person who will try at least two or three or ten ten natural home remedies before I go to a GP. My problem with the Western medicine is all the side effects that these treatments and medication have. It might, for example, relieve your headache, but at what cost? Not being able to keep your eyes open for two days or now having to deal with nausea and then you have to take another pill for that, which causes diarrhea, and then you need to take yet another pill to sort out that problem. I'm obviously exaggerating, but um, I think it is something worth discussing. Um, That being said, if my appendix is about to to burst, then I am definitely the first person who's going to be rushing to a hospital. What are your thoughts on Western medicine? Do you agree with its common practices? Do you think there is a place for it? Or are you purely an Eastern medicine kind of guy? Um, wow. Is it a hard question? What a loaded question. (laughs) Um, Okay. I find that there's definitely a place for both systems. Um, I do, however, find that allopathic medicine, Western medicine, is that. It is just medicine. Most of the traditional, and I hate this word, medical systems, like Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, etc., they focus on health and wellness. Um, so Western medicine has the concept, like the burden of disease, which is kind of what you explained earlier. Um, you have diabetes, let me take my glucophage, or my metformin, or whatever mitigation is available to them, but at the same time, it might diminish your kidney function. So you're gonna go back to your doctor and your doctor's gonna tell you, but hey, your kidneys might be diminishing, but you didn't die of diabetes, yeah, yo. <laughs> so for me or for us, that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, the point is and longevity. And they never ask you what caused the diabetes, hey? Or, you know, you know, they never treat the cause. Exactly. Um, so for us, the origin of disease is really important. What is that imbalance? Where is it coming from? Um, it is important, I think, to note that there is definitely place for both 
systems. I do, however, find Western medicine much better for acute conditions. You have septicemia, you're bleeding out, your appendix yeah. burst, etc. We can't turn it around anymore. We're Western like, medicine, that's yeah. what you want to do. But chronic disease, Western medicine is lacking in that department. It's also harder in Western medicine because everyone is specialized. So you can't go to one practitioner that's going to see the whole picture. You're going to need to go to an endocrinologist. You need to go to a dermatologist, a pulmonologist, or whatever else to kind and of get the picture. Expensive and as well. It gets expensive, yeah. but now you have 10 different brains and yeah. 10 different opinions, and opinions that are trying to tell you what is wrong and the yeah. opinions of other things amongst even more. each other. Yeah. yeah. So versus a Eastern philosophy where we look at the individual holistically. We look at all spheres. Um, I can use smoking, for example. So patients come in for smoking. I understand that the traditional route is to tell your patient, I guess, to you got to stop smoking. smoking right now. And, you know, like it's bad for you. And you kind of go down that whole route. Um, shock therapy, as we call it but it's not sustainable, yeah. it does not work. You need to look at your patient holistically. Why are they smoking? Yeah. What are the triggers? Yeah. Okay, so you're telling them, quit smoking, but have you eliminated the stress factor? Have you given them something to kind of replace that with yeah. or something to manage that stress? So it's, you have to look at the patient holistically, whether it's something good, whether it's something bad. And my usual approach for that is, I, it's hard for me to get them to just cut it out completely yeah. because there's a high likelihood they'll revert back to it and it's the same with if you tell yourself I'm never going to eat chocolate again that's the only thing you can think about so as soon as you try to cut something out immediately it's like your brain is so you're setting yourself up yes. for failure yeah. and when you do fail you feel bad and then what do you want to do you want to eat chocolate yeah, you want to smoke better. that cigarette yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle that keeps being perpetuated and more and more I think the world is kind of seeing that hey, okay, traditional medicine or Eastern medicines are actually the way to go. Um, the World Health Organization has made more conditions um, treatable by Chinese medicine, like officially treatable. Oh, wow. um, when did this happen? Um, I think it, it was sometime in end of last year. I think. Oh, yeah. super recently, hey? Yes. Um, there's also the inclusion of the World Health Organization is considering making new ICD-11 codes for like insurance purposes, okay. but ICD-10-11, specifically Chinese medicine codes. So Chinese medicine is definitely making headway or gaining traction um, predominantly maybe in the last say seven to ten years there's been a huge turnaround towards Chinese medicine um, I mean if you look at the end of I think it's the first Iron Man movie yeah Tony Stark yeah. Um, where he has his the um, the shrapnel in his heart so because you can't take it and aesthetic, they actually use the acupuncture in the show in the oh, yeah. movie that they use the acupuncture know. to be able to remove it. The acupuncture anesthesia. Yeah. Ironically, it turns out that Robert Downey Jr. and Gwyneth Paltrow are both the international Chinese medicine ambassadors. Yeah, and I know for a fact that Gwyneth Paltrow is like all about that lifestyle. Yeah, so. she uses cosmetic acupuncture. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, as you can see, there's an yeah. avenue for everything. And the nice thing with Chinese medicine is that it doesn't look at just the physical. There's the physical, there's the emotional, there's the psycho-spiritual, yeah, which is huge. Yes. Like, it, it, it is big. Um, we are predominantly driven by our emotions. We are driven by our needs, our desires, our wants. And that is what actually affects our physical body. So with most other medicine or Western medicine practices, they start off at the body. Yeah. And they generally don't venture that's further than that. Stop. That's kind yeah. of like where we begin, that's where we end, and okay, that's what it is. It's you can't segregate the body yes. from everything else. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of like unit. making the body or the person a statistic. Yeah. Which doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Again, Western medicine, you're painting everyone with the same brush. Yeah. Okay, you have the flu take this antibiotic or okay you have a headache take this painkiller with Chinese medicine so we look at where exactly is the headache located is it um, temporal is it a vertex headache is it occipital and you'll get a different treatment depending on 
where the pain is and then what are the associated symptoms. So you and your friend can come in with exactly the same condition, but you'll get two completely different So treatments. while we are on the topic of treatment, I was wondering, I know now that you do like sometimes just consultation and like um, that's all you do and then you do acupuncture and cupping, but is there any other treatments that you do and do you give people any herbal based medication or do you not treat with medication at all? Oh no, um, so we do um, acupuncture, we do cupping, and then there's something called gua sha, yeah. which is a very traditional Chinese um, medicine technique. That's such a cool word, well, gua sha. Gua sha, gua sha so yeah. explain it to us. Um, gua sha is basically, could also be called spooning or coining. Okay. Um, I guess spooning maybe has a different relationship <laughs> to it, but yeah, it's the use of a spoon. Um, so you basically applying maybe like a light balm or you don't even need a balm but you rubbing over a particular area with the spoon until you see that the skin starts becoming red or particular you'll see like little red spots um by today's standard roughly maybe a couple of years ago um there a new trend emerged in the western side of things called instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization okay Essentially, that's gua sha. Okay. <laughs> they just use a slightly so what's the fancier. Coin? Do you use a coin to do the same You can use um, so you can use a coin or you can use a spoon. Traditionally, any it's coin, done with. Like, um, obviously, you want the coin to be clean. But you want is it, it to be like sanitized. any any coin that yes. you just clean? You can use a coin. Thing. You can use a spoon. You can use um, the back end, the dull part of the knife. You can use anything that's okay. going to allow you. Um, surface tension when you're rubbing okay. it on the skin. Traditionally, it's used with jade stone quartz or sometimes a horn of a particular animal, but predominantly rose quartz and jade. Okay, so what's the difference between acupuncture and cupping and then this gua sha? Gua sha. Like, what different things do you treat with the different um, yeah, treatments? Okay, so the first three predominantly. Actually, you can treat you can treat almost anything. You can treat the physical and your internal organs, etc. But acupuncture we can use for anything from your anxiety and depression to some of the fibromyalgia to cancer to diabetes. You can use that for anything. Um, gua sha is interesting. So you get two kinds. You get pediatric gua sha and you get gua sha for adults. So gua sha can be used for pain management. Gua sha can be used for heat stroke, someone that has passed out. You can actually okay. use the gua sha to help them, um, to help revive them. You can use gua sha cosmetically to kind of like, think about like ironing out your little wrinkles on your face. And I'm sure you can see tons and tons of YouTube videos oh, now man. on gua sha. Yeah, it's, it it's, become, it's become an emerging trend right now. You'll see a lot of influencers also started using gua sha boards and stuff. Jade rollers. Yeah, I, um, I know about the jade rollers. So the joy, jade roller falls under the okay banner of gua sha and all okay, of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we've got moxa, um, which is moxibustion, which is artemisia, which we burn over an area that is transdermally absorbed. So we burn, it's kind of heating, um, also used for pain, but it works really, really well for ladies and for abdominal kind of conditions or menstrual kind of conditions, anything along those lines. Um, we've also got tweener, which is a type of massage. Um, it's a kind of medical massage, so it's not your traditional therapeutic, okay, let me chill, let me yeah. relax. Um, tweener, which is, you can also look at that as acupressure. Okay. Um, a lot of people opt for that initially because they're like, oh no, you know, acupuncture and the needles. needles and everything else. And they do the tweener and they're like, oh my God, no, the needles like don't hurt at all. It doesn't hurt at all. And the cupping looks so vicious because your whole like back is so red. My mother cried when I showed her mine. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt but you don't at feel all. It. You yeah. literally feel nothing. It kind of feels good, actually. It feels amazing. It feels I amazing. really love yeah. cupping. Um, and um, talk to us a bit about medication, herbal medication. Yes. So... Okay, we've got different kinds of medications where you have the raw herbs, which you can kind of like boil up, decoct and drink them. Or we have pills, we've got ointments, we've got capsules. Um, and most of them will be in combination. It's very rare you'll get like a single herb. Traditional Chinese medicine formulas are designed very specifically. Um, it's designed with 
four principles in mind. One will be to treat the primary condition. Yeah. The second lot of herbs would be to assist in treating the primary condition, possibly treating the secondary condition. Third will do the same, assist in the second category and then or eliminate whatever potential toxins or side effects might okay. be um, in the, first, in the first two categories okay. of herbs and then the fourth category is to harmonize the formula to basically make it palatable uh, most of the time it would be something like licorice root oh my um, goodness I love licorice root just to be and able to you have that to, in your office right I do I yes. remember like I, I can smell it <laughs> <laughs> I have them on the desk yes um, what other eastern medicine practices or remedies um, I think you spoke a lot about different eastern practices but um, do you use in your own own life like obviously do you go to an acupuncture do you do it on yourself um and when was the last time that you actually went to a gp can you even wow. remember <laughs> um yes i can the last time i went to a gp and i hope this does not get me in trouble was sometime in possibly my third year campus i do exams <laughs> on the same day and introduce a certificate um yeah that was the last time um I. How long was that ago then? You studied for five years? That was easily eight years ago, okay. nine years ago. That's yeah. a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I haven't taken antibiotics in, I don't know since when, but growing up though, um, my mom, ironically, yeah, my mom actually treated us with a lot of herbal home remedies and stuff like that. Like it's very rare we actually went to the doctor, like you needed to be dying. Is that. Is that because you guys are Indian? Because I feel like the Indians always have these awesome remedies, like they use turmeric for this and they make their own. Is, do you think that has to do with your culture or do you think that's just your mother? I think it's a little bit of both. So apparently, um, and I haven't met my, not my granny, I think it's my great granny, my mom's granny. Apparently she was a healer of sorts. Okay. She used to put together her own remedies and she used to kind of like heal people with all these little um, weird traditional methods, which I think initially was kind of frowned upon, like, what are you doing? And yeah, then the, the results day, were like, oh my God, like, okay, yeah. this really works. Um, so I think a lot of things have gotten passed down, but I think it also, it's the kind of person that you are as well. Um, and the influence around you, I suppose. Yes. Generally, you'll find that most people that gravitate towards a Eastern philosophy or a more traditional route, they tend to be more connected with themselves. Most people that follow a Western ideology, it's it's a quick remedy. It's like, um, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling well. I need to go get meds quickly because yeah. I need to get back to work. I need to get back into that rat race. Yeah, I need to do yeah, this. Yeah. I need to do that. There's no time to actually stop and heal. Most people assume, okay, when you get sick, it's just, you know, I, I, I got sick, I picked up a bug and, you know, I got sick. Your body has innate immunity to be able to fight with these things. More often than not, when you are sick to that degree, your body is also telling you, like, hey, man, yeah, slow down, you chill, you, you just need to take a break. Yeah. Like, we're running at max here, we need to calm down. It's like your car's heat gauge kind of yeah. going into the red, like, stop, chill, take a breather. I think it's something that we have forgotten how to do. Do. And so many people expect so much of you. So you kind of, it's like if you only had to let yourself down, maybe you would be like, okay, I can let myself down. But now you have like your partner, your children, your parents, your friends, your employee, like employer. Yeah. So um, I think that's why you sometimes feel you have to slow down, but you can't because you just have too much on the line. So you'll find like that exact explanation, like where people are generally like, okay, I need to do this and I need to do that and I can't rest and they have tons of emotional stress and everything else. They'll develop some kind of autoimmune disease. And that's the body attacking itself, trying to tell you again, yeah. calm just down, just yeah. chill, relax, take a breather. Listen to your emotional side. See what it is that is actually bothering you. What is affecting your subconscious mind that is changing the programming that, yeah. you know, that your body is trying to sabotage you to try and tell you, slow down. Do you think all, the, all this like Western medicine also, it, it numbs the pain or whatever, so you never get to the cause or you never, you never realize you're stressed or you're, I don't know, whatever could be wrong with you because it's numbed. It's like, you know, it's just like throwing a cloth over it and forgetting about it until it's going to pop up again later. Like you're going to drink this medicine, it's going to be like over for a while, but it's going to pop up again because you didn't really deal with it. Exactly. And that's why I'm telling you, Western medicine, phenomenal for yeah. acute conditions, yeah. but chronic, nope. Yeah. There's... 
So what I want to know is what you use in your own life. Like, what do you use on yourself? Um, what kind of treatments do you do? And so, yeah, I like to get myself to a point where I don't need medicine. Um, Not even herbal or... I might use supplementation okay. from a health or wellness perspective okay. to try and prevent myself from actually getting sick. So I okay. try and maintain balance. It's not easy. Yeah. Um, and like people would look at me and they'd be like, okay, like, you know, you're the doctor and you do this and you're that. Like I falter. I <laughs> have a late night. I indulge in cake or I'll have whatever else. I'm human. It's what yeah, we do. Yeah, of course. And balance. But for the most part, I try and strive for balance. So if I know, okay, I had so many slices of cake or whatever else, I'll offset it with that, um, maybe increase my water intake the next day, I'll burn off the calories, I'll go for a run, I'll go for a steam. I'll kind of do something to offset, for lack of a better word, the bad behavior. Yes. But for the most part, it's about balance. It's trying to eat properly, sleep properly, drink enough water, and keep your emotions in check. If you can understand that, four elements, you're good. You're good. Okay, so unfortunately, we have run out of time. So can you please tell our listeners where they can get in touch with you if they have a problem? You are based in Cape Town, so mostly in Cape Town, but where can they get a hold of you? Um, okay, so on my cell phone okay do you want to give out give out your number on the air um yeah <laughs> you don't have to no don't mind what about um, an email address yeah um we can do that there's or possibly better yet would probably be the website okay um the acupuncture clinic .co.za or the acupuncture center .co.za okay it'll both be directed to the same place um also on instagram under the same handle on facebook under the same handle oh, yeah. easy hmm Thank you so much for being a part of this episode, Dr. Janaid, and for coming in. I'd also like to thank Blended Audio for this platform and our production manager, who is also our, near, our engineer behind the glass today, Peter Mateser. And then last but not least, I would like to thank all our listeners at home. Be sure to tune in again next week when we will be answering all of your hair-related questions. Have a balanced week and remember to be kind to yourself so that you can be kind to others too. Feed Me Honesty is a South African lifestyle podcast hosted by Hazel Priscilla and produced with the generous assistance of Blended Podcasts, brought to you by Blended Audio.